Welcome to our story, Designing Accents. This program is going to help the people who have odds and ends from grandma's uh, cupboard that was left to them to how to display them, how to use them in table place settings or on the mantelpiece or on the bookshelf. Today we're going to work with silverware and the stuff we use, sometimes it's the stuff your grandmother gave you and you don't know what to use it for. It's this odd piece, serving pieces, different knives. So we're going to start over here with some of the forks. This fork, which has a very large edge on it, is used for pastry. Pastry forks. These little forks here that are very kind of short but not like a regular fork, this is used for seafood, such as shrimp. And all of these other little forks that you see here, with all these odd tines, are used to pick out pickles out of jars and stuff like that. So these are all those types of things. This, this set right here, they always go as a set. It's the fork, it has kind of a, what we call a pastry edge to it, but it truly is a, a meat fork with a potato spoon. So they're always used in the same sense as a potato and fork spoon. These are individual butter knives. Do you see how short the, the, the uh, handle is? Those are used as individual butter knives and they are used in a setting when you're serving your own butter. This butter knife here, and you see how it sits? It sits down on the table and this one sits flat. This one sits in a dish where this one sits on the side of a butter server. So it, so it can fit right into the ladle or the holster. These are very interesting spoons. They're quite large. These are called coin silver spoons. And what is meant by that is that during the time when the in colonial era, you had to bring your own spoon with you. Nobody had silverware per se. So you always brought your own. And why it's called coin silver is that usually you had silver coins and you took it to a maker and they would actually pound it out and make a spoon. And these spoons you always carried with you because you had your own. And they were usually personalized with even your name on it or your initials and the maker's initials. And they are solid silver. And usually you put them in your pocket and off you went. You only had one and then you always had a sharp knife with you. So those, these were actually traveling spoons. Forks came later. Spoons were first. In this area here, these long-handled spoons with a big bowl are considered serving spoons. These spoons are not quite as big a bowl on it, are soup spoons. And this is another type of a soup spoon with a long handle, with just a round area. But this spoon here, which is small, it's a smaller version of the big one, is used for cream soups. Cream soups are very rich, so you don't need a large spoon. And you see how this is a cream soup uh, server. What you do with these is that when you're done, you can, because it has two handles, you can drink right out of it. So those are fun. And these spoons are quite interesting. They have points on them. And you can almost guess what they're used for. They're used to get grapefruit out of sections. This other spoon that looks similar to a cream soup spoon is actually used for sorbet, which is that, that kind of that flavored ice between meals. Not sherbet, but sorbet. It's kind of a fruity, sugary, uh, cold stuff. And what that was used for was to clean the palate between the two courses. These are for iced teas, to mix the iced tea. This spoon here, this little tiny spoon, some of them are very fancy, there's all types. This is what we call a demitasse spoon, and these are used to mix demitasse cups of coffee, little tiny cups of coffee. These spoons here that have a really flat, you'll see a very flat edge on it, and a flat edge on this, these are jelly spoons for jelly. Because you know when, uh, when jelly comes out, it comes out in a big chunk or it's whole, you use this to slice off the jelly. And these here are very fancy sugar spoons. And sometimes this has kind of a shell shape. 
and sometimes you'll find they're called sugar shells. They're for the sh uh, sugars. Uh, this fork over here is a special fork. You see it has an ivory handle or a bone handle. And this, because of the way the tongs are and how flat it is, this is to serve fish. So you know how fish flakes. So you kind of get under a layer of fish and you would serve the fish this way. These are interesting service. People look at these and they just have no idea what they are. But when I tell you, you'll say, oh, it makes sense. This is to serve sliced tomatoes. You just push that under the tomato and put it on the plate. Instead of spearing it with a fork, you get the whole thing. It serves the tomato beautifully. Then you see this little tiny version of it. Because, boy, there again, you can see the difference in size. This is to serve aspect. Now, there's some what we call mechanical devices that have kind of little action devices. This one here is an ice tong that you pick up the cube and put it in the glass. And that's a really neat feature. This one here is, looks just about like it, but these are to pick up lumps of sugar and put it in the tea. This one here, which is a really fun thing, is when you get the pickle on the end of it and you want to get it off, you just press that and it pushes the pickle right off. It has that pressing action. That is a really neat piece. Now let's go on to a few serving pieces. This, these two pieces here are very unique. They almost, this is like for pie or pastries, but this is considered a cake or pastry knife and you can kind of even use that as an action. And if you remember our other thing about pastry forks, you see it still has that large side on it. So there's a connection between these pieces. And in this area here, we have more tongs. These tongs, because they are very much flat, are for pastries also. These are to pick up like, oh, brownies and things like that. And those are what we call pastry tongs. Quite unique serving pieces. Back to some specialty serving spoons. This spoon here, which looks like a gigantic, it almost looks like, is this for real? Well, it is for real. This is used to take the stuffing out of a turkey. Today on Designing Accents, I hope I've given you just an overall area of what you use. Some of these little tiny spoons, some of the bigger spoons, uh, and how one in another segment we are going to show how you put them onto a place setting. If you sit down one day and you get to a table and there's all these forks and knives going out from your place setting, you should know pretty much what you're having for supper that night.